All right, if you've done an eval in the last 24 hours, you've probably noticed some changes to the lumbar template. And here's a really quick uh, tutorial in, in what we changed here and, and specifically why. Um, so you won't see any, any changes, but just a reminder, functional limitations and participation restrictions are all about the patient's function and should really be used each time. That's why they're yellow and they should be made patient goals because that's what we're focusing on. One change you'll notice under objective psychosocial, we've added some predictors of poor outcome. These are what matter most, even compared to any objective finding you have. It's all about these types of risk factors. You can right click and see some of the main ones. If you see these, they need to be addressed. Below that, we've made some, some quick workflow changes. You'll notice again with a focus on function, we added these different skills where if somebody stands from their chair when you're doing your subjective and you talk about what can't you do, what needs to be a goal, these are the majority of what you'll see. You can simply right click, um, say whether they can or cannot do this. It's your option and you can quickly make it a goal and focus on function. Workflow changes below. Now after you do your active range of motion, you can immediately see if there was pain at end range right below it. When the patient's on the table, you can do your mobility testing and your PA testing right here to see if they're hypo or hypermobile. And then we have some of our, uh, our muscle tests right here. And more importantly, we've broken down the lower extremity symptoms you might see into discogenic symptoms, uh, special tests for that, versus tests for impaired neurodynamics, right? Because very different treatments. And if you're looking at that, you may be doing a quick neuro screen. So it's all right there. And then we've broken our, our hip tests down a little bit. So hip will all be clustered because that plays a big role in back pain. Last but not least, we all have uh, used photo before, but now you're going to see two other classifications that should guide our treatment. Start tool. Uh, right here, you can pick which risk factor the patient's in. Where do you find that? You find that on photo, which should be used with all lumbar spine patients. If it isn't, just give your PCC a gentle reminder. It's a new workflow for them. So cut them some flack. Just remind them all lumbar patients should be getting the start tool added to their photo intake. Lastly, the classifications. This we can right click and say what category our back pain patient fits in. We all know they can fit into more than one. If that's the case, right click more than one and it'll at least help guide our treatment. Below that, you're not gonna see, we've made a couple small changes, but for the most part, it's just workflow improvements and small things to help guide our treatment in the right direction based on classifying patients correctly and focusing on function. That's all I got, thanks.